get on the Kenyan Taylor Designers group. So I shared the link there. Hopefully you'll be able to find this um, this live. Anyway, so today we'll be talking about how to co to attract and retain your ideal customers. Okay. I know I've been MIA, I've been missing in action, and that's because I moved, and by moving, <laughs> I I have to redo a lot of my, my house, like I'm doing a, what do you call, I'm renovating as such, so... A lot of my home is like a work in progress so if you guys are interested like you can see it's like I've paint I've been painting and painting and painting so like if you are interested in following along with what I'm I'm doing in my house you can uh, just come follow me I guess let me know in the comment section below also like yeah let me know if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing uh, as far as my renovations are going on in my house. All right, so I'm copying the link here and I'm going to put it in the comments section so you guys can find this live. Hopefully you'll be able to find it in the comments section. Anyway, so yeah, I, I moved, I'm renovating my house and so if you're interested in seeing the DIY projects I'm doing in the house, so like the painting, um, the little things. Actually, my husband installed these floors. If you can see it, forgive, forgive all the mess, okay? So like these floors, my husband did. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in knowing any of that, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to share. I do live in the United States of America, so some things are not be available in Kenya, but I imagine, you know, there are things that you can do for yourself, like painting. It's something that we can all do for ourselves, yeah? And then, because I am interested in Kenyan fashion and African fashion, I do also think that the decor and you know crafting is also important as far as african arts are involved and so i intend on putting a lot of african touches in the deco if i can show you the bit about going live is that i can move around don't look at the mess okay look at the inspiration so like the cupboard because i have a small house i have to be creative with the space so like this pantry here i've put zebra zebra wallpaper back there um so things like that like african touches and stuff like that if you're interested let me know and i will keep documenting my progress as i do my <laughs> home interior so um hopefully some of you guys will be able to join me but if not hopefully you'll be able to find it at some point in the future and still find value in it the reason why I went live today, I know I got so much sidetracked, okay? The reason I went live today is to talk about how you can attract and retain the ideal customer to your business. And I asked a question in the Kenyan, and Kenyan Tailors and Designers group. I asked what your reaction would be if your customer said they didn't like this, something that you made for them. And I got so many good responses. Thank you so much to all of you who commented on that post. Um, and you gave me so many ideas and I wanted to discuss that a little bit with you today. So the first thing I wanted to say is I got three main themes. Yeah, The first one is whether or not you are willing to get that feedback from your customer Second, what you have re what option you're going to go with. So are you going to go with the positive or the negative part of getting that feedback? And then the third is how what the outcome is going to be depending on the choice you take. Okay. So my role here is to kind of <laughs> what was that? It's like a a little piece of lint or something. Anyway, my role here is to kind of guide you through 
um, how you're going to make these decisions for your business, the, the decisions that are best for your business, yeah? One thing might be good for you, but might not be good for the next person. So I kind of want to help you look at both sides of the argument and see which which cause is best for you and your, and your business okay so the first thing um the first thing is like when you are going into the managing the relationship between you and your customer you kind of want to think about two things is it your pride or your integrity that is talking yeah so for example if a customer comes to you and says this thing you made for me, Missy Kuipenda, I shall to mention it because it's a combo. You know, it's not what I was looking for. So the first thing is, would you prefer? Would you be reacting from a press, a place of, I am the best at what I do, and you don't know what you're talking about, and you can go on your way, or, you know, it, will it come to uh, from a place of? I understand you don't like <laughs> what I made for you. This is how I work. This is my brand. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry that, you know, my product is not what you're looking for and you can move on to something else. Yeah. So how do we approach this type of dilemma? Is it a matter of getting our feelings hurt? Because if you're an artist, yeah. If you're somebody who you're creating, you know, come away with me, Fundi. You're creating something with, with a passion because you went into fashion because you liked creating fashion products. And then somebody is coming to tell you that that thing that you've put so much time and effort they didn't like, it kind of hurts our feelings. It, it hurts your pride. But then there's an opportunity to learn from your customer as well as an opportunity to stand up for yourself. So it's a, must, it's a matter of knowing when to, when to employ one option over the other. You can say, I know this is the best I can do, and I'm sorry that this is not something you're looking for, and maybe next time you can find a different product of mine that works for you. Or you can say, I sent a sana customer for pointing out ABC. I will see what I can do. I can nezarekebisha. And then you learn a lesson for the future. This is just the psychology of a customer. So kama mimi ni customer, in my mind, I'm thinking I've already given you my money or I'm about to give you my money. So I want to feel like what I'm getting for the money I've given you is worth it. Sitaki ku regret. And so when a customer is complaining, it's not because they just want to be difficult. Maybe some of them, some of them might just want to be difficult. But most of them, when they're complaining or they're saying something, first of all, it takes guts. You know how hard it is to, to complain to a fundi or to complain to somebody who's giving you service, yeah? It's very hard. So it takes guts. So we have to understand where our customer is coming from also. So first of all, it takes a lot of guts for your customer to say, hey, Yemeni, this thing that you've made, so let's understand where our customer is coming from and then meet them halfway. Kama ni customer manga, ambao yeye ni tu kisirani kisirani, then there's nothing you can do. That customer is just going to be difficult and you can just write them off and say, I will not do business with this person. However, if it's a customer who has been loyal to you, who has been, you know, understanding, ukimwambia kuja kesho customer nimelemewa niko na watu wengi and understand that is somebody you want to keep in your you know in your in your rotation to keep coming to your business so that, because these are loyal customers it's so hard to get loyal customers so we want to make sure those relationships stay for a long time yeah so yeah the way we react is it coming from pride or is it coming from pride, um from integrity the second theme i got from those um comments from that post that I asked again, the, if you haven't seen the post, go to the Kenyan Taylor, Tailors and Designers page. I I, did, I put a, uh, a video up there asking a question and asking you guys to leave a comment. So if I ask questions, I'm I, I'm asking so that I can make videos like this that will bring you um, some sort of value. Okay. So the second thing I got is being flexible versus getting used or getting taken advantage of. But I think I touched on this a little bit. So 
when a customer comes and says, hey, I didn't like this, I didn't like A, B, C, D, depending on what your schedule is like, yeah, kama uko na customers wengi and you don't have the time to accommodate this customer's complaints, you know, you have to weigh, are you being, like, can I, can I be... Can I be flexible with this customer? Or is it something that I have to push to the side? Mm? And then there's the other opposite side where your customer might be now using you or your customer is just now being extra. So it's knowing one who your customer is and knowing what the, 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 where they're coming from. Again, the same point is like, understanding where your customer is coming from if you can f you can see that your customer is just being taking advantage of you and akuja every 5 minutes and ataka ufanyia adjustments mara nini mara nini then you know there's a time and there's a time where it will come to a point you need to draw the line and say after two times there's nothing i can do with this thing because now it's I don't know if that makes sense. The worst thing you can do to your customer is not be honest with them and maybe lie to them. Okay, So we want to make sure that we are honest with our customers and make sure that whenever we are faced with an unhappy situation where our customer is not happy, we can be honest with them, basically. And the third one is knowing your like knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are versus knowing learning new skills. So if a customer akikuja akisema nime nimenunua hii kitu kutoka kwako ama umenishonea hii kitu but I don't like the way it's fitting. Um you can say this this is what my skill is. This is what I do. There's nothing else I can, like, you know your strengths, right? And if your customer comes to you wanting, let's say you make men's suits and your customer comes to you wanting you to make women's wedding dresses, you can say, listen, my, your satisfaction is so important to me that I would rather not disappoint you. I would rather say no to this money and not disappoint you than give you a bad product. So, Ndio. so knowing where your strengths are, knowing what your skills are, are versus being able to learn new skills and challenging yourself and improving. There are different ways we can make our customers happy. It doesn't have to be rigid. You don't have to be rigid in that kama ni hiki na jua ni hiki na jua wewe customer ni yako. You can go on your own way. You can you can try and adjust with depending on the situation. If it's a situation where you can learn something new from this customer request, go ahead go ahead and do it, and your customer will be happier for it. If it's a matter of hey, this is, this customer is asking something that is way beyond my ability, be honest and tell them, listen, this is way beyond my ability, and I don't think I can deliver something that will make you happy. I can send you to so and so who knows how to do A, B, C, and you can get a good um, service from that person. Sindio. So just making sure our customers are happy is being in balance with also ourselves, being able to recognize our strengths and weaknesses, whether or not we are coming from a place of pride or or integrity. Like, are we honestly? able to to deliver to this customer or are we just being prideful and and thinking you know i can do anything you know i can do this yeah which is good challenging yourself but not challenging at the expense of your customer because when your customer is unhappy that is money running away from you from your pockets yeah so you want to make sure if you're challenging you're not challenging yourself at the expense of your customer you challenge yourself at your own time and make sure you're delivering something that is of quality. So the different um, media I put up there is like, why is it easier for you to attract and retain customers? It's because I um, there's no more guesswork, basically. Yeah, there's no more guesswork in what is going to work, what isn't going to work. I am here. I'm committed to help you guys find 
the best tips for working on your businesses, especially if it's a fashion or a craft or an artisanal business that is centered around African products, yeah? And I think that these small businesses are the ones that are going to build long-term uh, legacies when it comes to fashion. At the late 80s, early 90s, I think the, that's when the second-hand clothing started coming um, in full force. There were many Kenyan textile factories. There were many Kenyan uh, brands. Um, if you ask your big sisters or big brothers, if you ask your moms and dads, they will tell you there are so many Kenyan um, river text, Kenyan fabric, Kenyan textile, Kenyan fashion brands that went kaput because of Mitumba. So I think it is time for us to start now nurturing small businesses like you guys who are part of this Kenyan tailor and designers um, Facebook group uh, to nurture these talents to make sure that the, the 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 trade the talent the know-how keeps going on and building our domestic industries as well and yeah so i invite you guys to follow me on my other social media handles i i am start now that i've moved <laughs> Now that I've moved, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more active and a little bit more consistent in the content I produce, especially for YouTube, the long format. YouTube is a little bit hard because it's, you know, you have to edit and it's, it's more intense than like Facebook Live and stuff like that where I just have to sit and talk to you guys and interact with you guys. So if you are interested in seeing different kinds of content from me. So I'm trying to experiment with like vlog style content, not like vlogging my whole day or something like that, but like vlogging how maybe I'm going through my decor um, and renovations for my house. Um, also we talking about like the African and Kenyan fashion topics and also, yeah, de decor interior DIY projects. So I'll be doing a lot of DIY um, projects like DIY meaning do do it yourself projects. There is a new video up and it is the Kitenge Fest uh, in that took place 2022, yeah, this year in Adorit. So if um, you're interested in seeing what your counterparts were presenting at the 2022 uh, Kitenge Fest, go to my YouTube page Coopsy Inc. Make sure you subscribe also and check out the new video. Okay. So until next time, you guys stay well. And I hope that all your efforts pay off when it comes to your business, when it comes to your fashion business. I, you know, whoever you want to wear your dress, whichever celeb that you have put in your mind to wear your dress this year, next year. May that happen for you, my brother. May that happen for you, my sister. And may our fashion, our fashion brands just explode and go to new heights. Amen, amen. All right, until next time, you guys stay well. Bye, and thanks so much for spending your time with me tonight. I really, I really appreciate it.